Oh, oh my bad. Hold on. Sorry. Sorry. There we go. That, that wasn't, that wasn't right, actually. Um, that was Ditsy Flama on Twitter. Um, I don't know if they're the source of that, but uh, that is where I found the video. And honestly, pretty good. Like, it, like it's pretty good. Uh, I'm dropping frames. <laughs> I'm dropping 30% of frames, which isn't the worst, but it's not the best. So um, we're going to hope that uh that doesn't slowly start to go up until my stream crashes you know i've just been having a real time with my internet and connectivity on my my uh my machine here lately which is kind of annoying um but if it goes down i'll just have to run over and restart my router and hope that 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 fixes it uh will it who knows we'll find out hopefully um but until then i'm just gonna keep on trucking and and call it a day uh yeah, let's see here. I'm gonna... Yeah! <laughs> Alright. Let's get that- let's get that going. I'm gonna turn that down a little bit so I can hear myself think. Alright. Booyah. Ah. <sighs> Welcome everyone. Good- good- good, af good afternoon. Good evening. It's- it's almost 8pm where I live actually, so yeah, it's good- it's good evening. But I realized, um, I realized that I could, I could stream this page and it, and it wouldn't be like mega spoilers for anything. So, um, so here we are and I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. However, I'm pretty sure that the literal next page is definitely like spoiler territory that I, that I pro I probably can't stream. So it'll be short, it'll be a short lived victory, but that it's the little, it's the little things, you know? Okay, let's see. Got a little bit of a fur collar going here. I might- I'm not even sure if I like this base underbody kind of thing that I got going here. I might have to redraw it. We'll see. Hopefully not. But, um, I'm behind. I'm behind on pages. Uh, and I hate it. I'm not even, like, behind, because that's the entire point of having, like, a buffer of comic pages that, like, come out, like, a few weeks, even- and, like, drawing them in advance and then having them, like, be ready and, like, scheduled to go up, whatever. But I- I, I have this buffer, and I don't like it when it gets smaller. <laughs> I don't like that one bit, so I keep drawing pages at the same rate that they're going up to maintain the buffer. And the buffer's gotten, like, a little bit smaller, especially since my vacations, like, uh, from August and September happening so quickly together. So, um, like, they just kind of contributed to, to me not having, like, the time or the drive to, to work on pages for a hot minute. So, I, I, I got a little catch-up to play. Um, falling behind like I did recently, like, over the last like, week or so, even, wasn't really, like, the fault of the, um, the vacations. It just kind of happened. It just kind of happened, you know? That's okay. It, we're, 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 we're making it work, I think. God damn it. Sometimes I have a lot of fun drawing clothing folds, and other times I'm like, that's not what- that's not a thing. That's not anything that looks like anything real. I, I, I can either overthink them, or they come supernaturally, and I don't have to think of them at all. Supernaturally. <laughs> oh, I'm a card. I have not stopped thinking about my friend referring to a ship between Link and Groose as either needing to be grink, grink, or l loose. I haven't stopped thinking about it. It's haunting me. And I want someone to hurt me to get it out of my brain. That's the extent to which I need it, I need it gone. This is all jokingly, of course, but it's real, it's, ugh. People are talking about like with the, the, the whole uh, McCree name change to Cole Cassidy. Someone made like a joke post being like, uh, you know, shout out to Mikonzo shippers that they have two options now. It's either, um, Kozo <laughs> or it's Holt. <laughs> and you know, why not like, oh, the Cassidy or something? I don't fucking know. Just anything but that. 
Like, what's his hero name gonna be? Like, it was McCree, so it was his last name before, so is it gonna be Cassidy now? Is it gonna be Cole? Imagine having a hero name of Cole. Some call him Redacted now. Uh, that's really funny, actually. Hyperlink blocked. <laughs> What is this from, actually? Also, hi, hello, welcome. I hope you're having a good evening, my friend. Street Pass Plaza. That's what this is from. I've heard this song a couple of times in the in recent, recent, recent vi vi videos, recent videos, I suppose. And I'm always like, this is from like Yoshi or something, right? And then it's not because I try to look it up and I can't find it and I go insane and I don't know how to look it up because it's not like anyone ever includes what music they use in the background if it's just like generic background video game music. Technically this isn't even a video game though, it's Street Plaza, right? That's not like, it's just like a menu. Right? I don't know, I never did Street Plaza. I didn't take my DS out with me into the world. Uh, I had a life. Oh! V victim mage hello thank you for the follow haha -ha, little little jingle no noise there that was fun i i'm still caught off guard by the fact i set those up i am the one i am the harbinger of my own surprise and i am i <laughs> i am still i am still caught off guard by them because i when i set them up they were they were they were f they were fucked up bro they were messed they would not stop echoing and, and going all over the place and making just weird little noises. Um, so I had to turn them off. And uh, I turned them back on recently because I, I tried to like troubleshoot the problem and figure it out and see what was going on and all that good stuff. And, and then they just worked. And then they just worked. It, I, I don't know. It, it, was, it was just fine. Which, I mean, less work for me, but now I don't know how to prevent it if it ever happens again, so... Here's hoping that it doesn't! This doesn't- he's supposed to be kind of like, uh, bent over a little bit. He is sitting on his knees, and it doesn't really look like he's bent over at all. Um, so it's a little bit of an awkward sitting position that I've drawn in here, but... Every pose can't be perfect, so... Let's see, get a face going here. I don't know why, I- I was about to say, I don't know why I leave the faces for last, but that's because I I fuss over facial expressions the most, so they take the longest. So I, I always get everything else done first, because I'm stalling, basically. <laughs> I don't know what, how I want his eyes to be, if, they, if I want them to be closed, or if... This, this looks okay so far. You keep the best fort he last. <laughs> That's the rule. I'm sorry, I did not realize what you were trying to say until I read it out loud and I was like, wait, oh, I didn't mean to like roast you for a typo. I would have done the same thing. I just genuinely didn't realize what you were saying until I read it out loud. I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, Christ. Oh, fuck yeah, I love this song. This song is fucking awesome, bro. Let's go. Ah! Oh, I heard my phone go off and it's across the room and I, it was just an alarm. We're fine. It's 3 a.m. here and you do this to me. I'm sorry! I'm sorry! Damn, it's 3 a.m.? Jesus. Well, you know, I hope, um... I hope my very loud voice doesn't keep you up any later than, than you would stay up otherwise, my friend. Lord have mercy. Wee. I think that looks fine. Um, hang on, let me, uh... I actually have a, uh... I have a little wi uh, window open... Uh, of two palettes that I use for coloring my comics that you guys cannot see because they are popped out windows. Um, which can be beneficial sometimes, and other times it just- There's context you're missing. Hello! Hello, Chibi! Welcome! Do you still draw OCs? Every now and then, yeah. Um, honestly, uh, it happens a lot where I will 
maybe fall off of being like super fucking like hyper fixated on a certain series or whatever. If I'm super like attached to a series, I'm usually drawn fan art or like drawn my favorite character. But uh, it's happened plenty of times where I'm not super into a, a series, and so then I just default back to thinking about like my own characters and drawing OC art and stuff like that, because that's always keep me keep me pretty entertained. Right now, since I'm of course doing all my comic work and whatnot, I'm I'm pretty pretty logged in, pretty tuned the the frick in on um comic work and thinking about these guys pretty consistently. But even so, like I try to I try to like pace myself so that I don't get like burnt out because this comic's gonna take a really long time and I don't want to just flood my thoughts with it and burn myself out on it and then make it to where I don't want to work on it that would be very bad and usually because otherwise I'm not really super attached to anything right now I am usually thinking about OC so yeah I'll still I'll still definitely uh, d f do a little do a little thing for a, a, a random character every now and then. Hello, Shawnee. Welcome. Like, oh, 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 for example, for example, um, um, I got to join in uh, on a friend's uh, multi animator project on a friend's map, and uh, <clears throat> uh, I've never been a part of a map before. Uh, so I so whenever my friend opened one up, uh, I was like, oh well, what better time to try and start out? And it, the, the the theme was villain OCs. So I got to make an entire nine second animation based off of this freaky little weirdo that I adore so much. Um, and I have no idea when this map is going to be able to get done because uh, a, a lot of people that joined in ended up um, getting kind of busy. So it's it was originally projected to come out like Halloween, but then we had to give people more time. So it's uh, being pushed back a little bit. That being said, I'm done with my part. So now I can just kind of sit back and relax and wait and i am very very pleased with how it all came out and i'm super excited super excited about it this this particular character um is one that i come back to a lot constantly their name is dajado uh they're a tiefling they're a D, &D character i haven't actually gotten to play them yet <laughs> but they're just a fun they're not even like necessarily like evil explicitly they're just fucking they're just fucking weird um, and they're a lot of fun because of that. They have no moral compass or sense of any of that that stuff. So they they're just a slimy little weirdo, and I adore them for it. Love them, love them. But yeah, no. So I'll still I'll still draw an OC every now and then. For sure, dude. All right, let's see. There's Hypa. Let me label this. Label this. Uh, that was a layer. Label this layer. Wow, that was a really hard. Could not think of the word there for a second. It was unnecessarily difficult. Da, 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 da. Also, there's so many new people here. There's some people I don't get to see super often. There's some new people here. I'm super excited about that. Welcome. I hope everyone's having a good evening. Or in the case of um, Titan Newt, I don't know how to say your name. I'm sorry, but uh, you said it was 3 a.m. for you. So I hope you're having a good morning. Haha! Uh -huh. Close enough. Swag! Ah! Oh, got it in one! I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, but yeah, no. God, it is morning. Yeah, it is, dude. Why, why are you still awake? Can you not sleep? Are you are you good? You need you need you need me to sing you a little lullaby? Lull you asleep? You need, you need a little glass of warm milk? <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh fuck, I spit on my fucking screen. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm disgusting. Ugh, oh, lord have mercy. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna turn that back off for a second. Merge these together. <sighs> Let's see, let me go back to my dialogue here. Now that I know where Hypa is, I can draw a tail for the speech bubble. Here it's just 10 p.m. Okay, so you're like two hours ahead of me. It's eight here, so. It's not always that I draw like a base dummy here, but I feel that it I, I, it helps sometimes whenever I have to draw like clothing folds. Um, it helps me get the pose down, um, especially for like Link is wearing like this big uh, coat right now, this big kind of baggy-ish coat. So uh, it's hard to tell like where, um, how his body contorts sometimes. So sometimes it helps to draw like this base kind of dummy here and then draw the clothes on top of it. It helps with clothing folds and whatnot. Other times with Zelda, who's wearing something a little bit more form fitting, um, it's a little bit easier to just go from to just go from my sketch into the line art, honestly. 
Don't have to do as many steps. Okay, let me turn that back to blue. Make a new layer on top here. Fun fact about me, I guess. Not really, but the um the every time I turn like this is this blue is just like a default. You can't really see it underneath the chat box. This blue is just like a default layer setting. Um, you can change this color to whatever you want. But it just defaults to that kind of light blue. Uh, and every time I turn that on, I, I remember my, my my grandfather, who is an architect, and he showed me whenever I was a kid this one this one like thing that he would use whenever plotting out architecture stuff or whatever. Uh, it was like a it was like a tool for drawing straight lines. You would, it, it was, if I remember correctly, it was kind of like a tape measure, honestly. It was like a, a little compartment that held some string. Um, and the string was coated in like light blue chalk. So you would pin it, you would start it at one place and then pull it out and then pin it somewhere um, on top of a piece of paper uh, so that the string was sitting on top of the piece of paper. And then you would grab the string, pull it up and pluck it. So then it would snap back down onto the paper and then the chalk would draw a nice little straight line for you underneath. A little nostalgia for you. That's what I think of every time I have to use this layer effect to get like a little base going, I can build off of. Oh, I haven't had dinner yet. Whoops. It's fine. I'll figure it out. His, his head's kind of tilted down a little bit. Let me uh, do a little bit of a guideline here. I can. <coughs> ah! A little bit of a hairline. Figure that out. Got a, kind of an egghead going on. A little bit better. That's a little bit better. Okay. I might start... If I can't get this hair down, I might start on some of the clothes just to get myself something else to do. Sideburns, sideburns. I don't really know if you should call these sideburns. Like, you know, they're kind of in the same place as a sideburn, but I feel like sideburns apply more specifically to like the very, very short close shave hairs on the side of the head more than just like the lock of hair that goes in front of your ear. You know what I'm saying? But I don't know what else to call it. So I just call it a sideburn. Da, 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 da. I need to fix this ear. It's not on the same side as his head. There we go. Sideburns like a start of the beard or something, generally. Yeah, yeah. I see that, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, like I said, I I don't think that technically these locks of hair would be considered that, because they're not really that. Not like not really. But what else would you call them? I have no idea. Well, a lock of hair. <laughs> eh. Anyway. <laughs> I, a lot of character designs in Shattered Tomorrow actually kind of have them, the just like the very long locks of hair on the sides of the, the ears. You know, it's just a good look. In my opinion, it's a, good, it's a bit of a look. Oh my god. I don't know why that reminded me, but it did. <clears throat> Earlier uh, today, I went with my mom. Uh, she she owns a lot of, I guess not owns, like rents more is the correct word. She uh, participates in a lot of um, antique malls around town um, and has a lot of booths. Uh, she rents out booths in them and, and fills them with stuff and people come and they buy and, and, and sell and whatnot. And uh, I, I went there with her so she could check on her booth and also so I could like look around and stuff. And um, there, as I was walking to one side of the store, there were these three people and one of them had this like ripped sleeveless black denim vest on with like studs that they had put in themselves. Um, and 
and like patches and pins and all this cool stuff. And on the back of it, they had painted the entire back of the vest with a trans flag and a poem. And it was so fucking cool. I literally went up to them and I was like, that's, I love that. That's amazing. And then they gave me like an Antifa pin and I was so, I was so jazzed. If running into um, kindred spirits around here is not super common, so that was very much just like, <laughs> it made me very happy. Hello, Jess. Welcome. It's good to see you. I hope you're having a good day. This music reminds me that I'm so fucking excited for the Animal Crossing update. <clears throat> It's not for another, like, two weeks, so I'm wondering if, like, my brain will have calmed down. My day's been alright, how have you been? It's been alright as well. I'm- I'm wondering if my brain won't, like, because it has to wait two weeks, if, like, the little mini burst of fixation I have on Animal Crossing because I'm excited for the new update, if it won't, like, die down, and then I won't even, like, log in and check it out. I'll be really mad at myself if I- if that ends up happening. But I probably won't even remember to be mad at myself. I don't know. Ugh. ADHD! But I've been, um, I made that little video the other day on YouTube of me making bad decisions, uh, i.e. tearing down, well, not, not necessarily tearing down, but taking down all the flora, uh, and, like the trees and the, the bushes, the flowers, and taking down all of my furniture that I had set up so that I could start over. I didn't, I haven't even really, like, undi undid any of the, 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 like, ground, you know, like the, the landscaping, because a lot of my ground around where I took down a bunch of stuff, because I'm working on the airport entrance, a lot of the airport entrance on my island was pretty flat, so didn't really have to do a whole lot of landscaping there. Also, <clears throat> it was covered in a lot of path, but um, because I have been doing a lot of landscaping, if you just do the landscaping, it gets rid of the path anyway, so kind of killed two birds with one stone in that regard. But one one stone y you you know what i mean but i've been doing all this work even before the update has come out <laughs> who knows if that'll pay off or if i'm gonna end up undoing a bunch of stuff i don't think so because from the approximate knowledge of what we know is in the update like there's gonna be new furniture um and there's gonna be like new fences and whatnot and I know that I'm going to want to use some of those fences, but uh, building and adding fences isn't like big landscaping work and adding different furniture also isn't big landscaping work. So, you know, I'm just kind of, I'm kind of setting the scene, setting the mood. Uh, and whenever it finally drops, I'll be ready for it, mostly, is what it feels like. Drawing like the fabric of this coat kind of buckling around Link's hip. I've had to do it several times, and I've never really understood it any any time that I've had to do it. Just kind of making it up as I go along. I could look up reference, but that would take a long time. Don't be like me. Use use reference. It's don't be don't be like don't be like me. Do as I say, not as I do. <clears throat> Let me look at this foot over here. So it's like kind of upside down. Uh, rather, you kind of see the bottom of it. Oh, oh Jesus. <laughs> I've been laughing too hard. So now I have phlegm in my throat. I'm sorry, it's disgusting. Oh, this looks bad. Oh, it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good. No, it doesn't. No! Oh, also, whenever I went to that uh, antique store, the, um... I, uh, you know, the antique store usually sells, like, kind of just, like, little knickknacks and, and and furniture uh every now and then i'll see like some cool like clothing or whatever but not like a whole lot not entire racks worth certainly um but whenever i went there maybe it's because like they know that they'll, they might sell a little bit more apparel around like halloween time i don't know either way there was a lot of clothes there when i went there this time around and i was very confused but not upset there was this like baby tee that was memphis pattern and if you don't know what memphis pattern is it's literally like the geometric like uh, uh dots and circles uh like 90s arcade carpet it's it's literally like this this stuff and all the weird colors or whatever so that's what memphis pattern is i saw that on like a mannequin on a top shelf and i was like 
I'm going to own that, whether this person that put it on display likes it or not. Um, I couldn't see a like a tag from where it was up on the shelf, so I didn't even know. Maybe they put it up there because it wasn't even for sale and they just wanted to like make it an eye catch for their booth. But um, my mom, who is who is six feet tall, uh, was was kind enough to um, help me get it down. And uh, upon inspection, it did have a tag, and it was like ten freaking bucks, and it fit like a glove, and I absolutely bought it, and I'm stoked. I can guarantee that if I tried to look up like a Memphis pattern t-shirt or whatever, it would probably be like 20 to 30 bucks or whatever. Like nostalgia bait, nostalgia tea or whatever, it's stupid freak. I got it for $10. I'm freaking, I'm, I'm poggin' bro, I'm poggin'. Do do do, do 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 do. Okay, this looks pretty good. Um, let me erase out some lines. And then I will try and draw his face. Fuck yeah, me channel. You know, right? Right? Did you know that those patterns on buses and other places is just to hide the dirt? I saw that and my mind exploded. That makes sense, honestly. Especially with, like, if, if you're talking about, like, the Memphis pattern and whatnot specifically, that makes complete sense in regards to the fact that they're, like, so dark. So they would hide dirt like that really well. A little disgusting when you think about it, because then they just kind of give themselves an excuse never to clean as much as they probably should, but... But, uh... <coughs> genius. In regards to... Making people think that they don't have to clean that often. <laughs> Alright, let me try and get up here and draw his little face. Is this Earthbound music? This is Earthbound music, isn't it? <coughs> this is absolutely Earthbound music. You know, I thought about it. I thought about it a little bit. And I- I still don't have, like, a- I don't have a good enough... ...idea of... I don't have a good enough idea to, like, give a ballpark estimate of when Chapter 2 is. But I kind of thought about the amount of events that need to happen um, from my thumbnails to, to, until the end of chapter one. And it's, it's getting pretty close. And I'm pretty excited about that. Once I get to like <laughs> the end in thumbnails, I'm not gonna be able to shut the fuck up. I'm gonna be losing it, dude. I'm gonna be just like vibrating in my chair. It's still, it's still like, it's still got a little bit to go, but it's... It's... It's close. It's close enough for me to start losing my mind a little bit. So once I actually feasibly get there, I'm gonna... I'm... I'm gonna be freaking... I'm gonna be freaking out. I, I still don't know exactly what I'm going to do as soon as I get to the end of chapter one. Uh... Because I want to be able to give myself time... I want to be able to give myself time to uh, redo the first 37 pages and the prologue um, like from 2016 to 2018 because I want to make a physical copy. So I need to figure out if I either want to go on a small hiatus, which I really don't want to from from the standpoint of this comic is probably going to take me eight or ten fucking years, uh, depending. So I want to go on a li as little hiatus as possible. <clears throat> but... Um, it's either take a hiatus, uh, or or maybe for for a bit, maybe at the start of chapter two, go back to releasing like one page a week. Because what I could do potentially um, is I'll have, depending on how my buffer goes until the end of chapter one. Right now I've got 
For public pages, I've got a two month buffer. For Patreon pages, I've got a two week buffer because I'm behind on, uh, I'm behind on my on my buffer. Um, but if I can get that back up to like being a full month, then I'll, I'll have the um, I'll have chapter one finished, and then I'll have a month to start working on, of course, chapter two and redoing the uh, first part of chapter one. Um, but I'm thinking because I normally get two pages done a week, uh, on average, if I can just dedicate half that time to doing chapter two and then half that time to redoing chapter one a little bit, like that's only going to be for a short amount of time guaranteed anyway, since I only have a finite amount of pages I have to redo and it'll just be until I can get all of those done. So I might, I'm, I'm, I'm leaning towards doing that, but I also might enjoy the time to buffer up. I don't know. I, I really don't want to go on a freaking hiatus, man. There's nothing wrong with it. Like if you need to absolutely do, it's just that with Chatter Tomorrow and my specific situation, it's already been on hiatus for so long and it's going to be so long that I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to. I want to avoid it as much as possible. Here's me fussing over, uh, fussing over facial expressions again. There we go. That's that's fine. His hair is kind of big. I'm gonna fix his hair. Chapter two. Chapter two. <laughs> I went to um, I went to a campground that my uh, like a, a part of my aunt uh, my aunt has like a few acres of of land on like a campground or whatever. And uh, every fall we go up there and just like roast some roast some hot dogs and some s'mores and just hang out for like an afternoon. So the only reason I went uh, is because it is outdoors and also because there were not going to be as many people as there normally is. So I had plenty of opportunity to stay the fuck away from everyone that that I did not trust. The um the uh. I was uh, drawn a little bit while I was up there, of course, because I was, I was bored and, you know, just sitting. I, I'm not going to go out of my way to talk to people about their jobs or whatever. I don't care. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm not good at reaching out and talking to people, okay? Like, I, I am very much like a, you can leave me alone and I will just sit there and mind my own business. Ah, oh, thank you, Jared. Hello. Welcome. Okay, don't spam the chat, ding dong. Uh, but I, I was sitting there drawing and, um... A lot of my a lot of my cousins and aunts uh, and uncles are, are pretty nice about it um, because they're they come up and they're like oh like are you like are you displaying it anywhere and I'm like no I'm just I'm just a, I'm just a doofus that draws as a hobbyist or whatever I don't get paid to do this <laughs> um and, but uh the thing is that of course I do post these things online so even if they come up and they ask like oh my gosh do you like post these anywhere like I'll mention like oh yeah like I'll post them online or whatever but I'm not gonna be any more specific than that because do they need to know no no they don't need to know about they don't need to know about these very gay webcomics you guys are lively around here you know I like to think <laughs> You reap what you sow, and I am a cartoon that came to life, so that's- it's kind of par for the course. Uh, let's see here, let me get Hypo back. Get the white, okay. Da -da, da -da, da -da. It's good to see you. How many, um, how many OCs do you have? That's a great question that I have not known the answer to for many years. I am very much, because, because I, I'm, I wasn't a very good writer for a very long time. I'm still not like, I'm not like the best writer, but I definitely know more what I'm doing and what it takes to be a good writer. I understand that better, but even so, I'm not going to pretend that I'm a great writer. I'm an artist first. 
So for the longest time, because you know, I've always been an artist first, I, I was very much about just like designing characters, but not really doing a whole lot beyond that. So I have a lot of character designs, but not a whole lot of written characters. That being said, <laughs> uh, I ha because I have because I have so many just character designs that I liked and, and never did anything with, I could not even begin to give you a ballpark estimate of how many character designs I have amassed over the many, many years. Um, whether they were designs that I drew once or designs that were always just in my brain that I never got around to drawing or, or what. Um, like, it's quite literally- I couldn't- I don't even know how to begin counting them. I think- I used to have, like, nearly a hundred Sonic OCs, and that's before I got rid of most of them because none of them were very good designs, because I was, like, an 11-year-old kid that only knew how to do recolors. Um, so, uh, as far as, like, new characters that I keep up with that are Sonic OCs specifically, maybe I'd say, like, I have less than ten. Probably. Furry? No shit, Jared! Keep up, dude! We've, we've been new. Um, I've got... I've got a few, like, fan characters as far as, like, um, how many Dragon Ball OCs do I have? I amassed a lot of Dragon Ball Cs, unexpectedly. Like, I've got Udumisu, Grandma, I've got, um, Okra, I've got, who the fuck else? Uh, I've got Luska, I've got Denny. Pff, fuck, there has to be someone else. Technically, I made a lot of AUs for Fu, and they, I've kind of taken them all on as OCs. I even made an OC that was just directly inspired off, inspired off of Fu, because I just joined a bunch of the writing that I did for him. Hi, Ty, I've been in and out and lurking. It's Pico. Hello, Pico! Thank you for stopping by. I have over 100 OCs and ship children, mostly OCs. I... Fucking... I feel that, dude. I fucking feel that. Dargan Borb OCs are fun. Exactly! Um, fucking who else do I have for OCs? I don't... I don't goddamn remember. I even bought, like, a, an adoptable off a friend of mine. Um, honestly, do I still have that? I have to have that somewhere. Where the fuck is that? Because I just want to show her off again because she's so cute. I got Dragon Ball OCs. What the fuck else do I have? Oh man, I got these three. These three. Love them. <laughs> I've got a lot of Dragon Ball OCs, and I didn't mean to make so many Dragon Ball OCs. <laughs> let me just like, let me just derail for just a second here. This is what it's like talking to me while I'm streaming. I get constantly distracted. I would get distracted whether or not I was streaming. So this is honestly it keeps me more on task. Um, it's like I get distracted overall less. I just take deeper dives into my subconscious. Where the fuck did I put it? I know it's in here somewhere, damn it. Wyvern orbs, serpent rounds. I need another word for dragon. I'm not gonna be able to help you there, bro. I'm not a, I'm not a thesaurus. I'm quite stupid, actually. I'm looking through my files right now. Just give me a second. I have a lot of- I, don't, I have a lot of really good Dragon Ball art, by the way. Just, you know, gonna pat myself on the back for that really quick. A lot of really good dragon ball art. Basilisk spheres. That's pretty epic, you know, all things considered. I also don't have a very- you know, it's funny, I drew a shit ton of dragon ball and yet I do not think in it- with, with all things considered, I don't have a very large dragon ball art folder. You know? I would have thought that it would be bigger. But also, I say that, and I can't find the one file I'm fucking looking for. I also don't even remember what I fucking called it. <laughs> so I can't just, like, look it up. Damn it. You know what? Nah, fuck it. No, but these three, um, ended up- I just wanted to make them side characters, but then I ended up keeping them. I can't, uh, this is Pavlova, this is Tiramisu, um, what the fuck is your name? Uh, Lamington, that's right. And they- they're mean. They're mean. <laughs> and I love them for it. I digress. Fireworm nuts. Alright, Jared, no. Indeed, times two. Any case, let's see, let me go down here. I have like a crumb on my chair that I'm sitting on and it's hurting my leg. And I can't find it to get it away from me. Okay, wait, actually, I think I got it. Okay, we're fine. Alright, drawing a hand. You shouldn't join the two middle hands and fingers together in your knees. Shut up, it's easy. I'm stupid. That 
wasn't that bad. Akira Toriyama's House of Bad Mamas. What the fuck? <laughs> what are you talking about? Who else is enjoying the music? You know, I'm having a great time with it myself. This this is literally like a mix on on YouTube. It's literally just a mix called like Nintendo music to procrastinate to. I love this this mix. It's very good. Let me uh Also, I think this is literally the Yoshi mix. If that like percussive instrument on the lead is is anything to go by. <laughs> Cause that's, I mean, that's usually the, like, the kind of the drum they use for the Yoshi music. I could be wrong. Okay, let's just kind of see if we can bullshit enough for a collar here. Okay, bullshit it better than that, me. There you, there you go. Okay, a little bit better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is for Yoshi. Ha ha! I called it! Super Mario Sunshine- Uh, Super Mario Sunshine- Ah, Jesus! Super Mario Sunshine is fucking good! It is good! You know, I still need to play it on stream. Um, purely because I- I- I think people would enjoy how fucking angry I get at it. I said this is my first Mario game. Hell yeah. I also think it was my first Mario game, but it was one of those games that I never um, owned. We only got to rent it, so I never got to play it very consistently, so I never got any good at it. It is such it is such a good game from like a, an aesthetic and art direction standpoint, music standpoint. It's it is also mechanically a good a good game. Um it just feels also like one of those games that <laughs> if you grew up playing it, you're going to be exponentially better at it. Because, <laughs> cause, again, I didn't get to play it a whole lot growing up. And god damn it, am I s shitty at it! <laughs> and it pisses me off so bad! Ah, uh, but, but then I think about Mario Sunshine, and I think about the stages, and I think about the music, and I'm like, yeah! Yeah, I want to play Mario Sunshine! Such a nice, fun, happy time, and then I play it, and then I see red. It's great. It's so, it's so, it's so much fun. We still have the original uh, GameCube, also the Switch version. Oh, nice, yeah. I, I have the, the Switch version now. I, I was very- like, whenever um, they announced the uh, 3D All-Stars mix, that was the game that I was excited for. I was like, yeah, I get to play Mario Sunshine. Hell yeah, good times, good times, man. And then I never- never beat it, because, um... Ooh! <laughs> Ooh! What is this song called? Sanctuary Guardian. Okay. This song was like a TikTok audio for a little bit. And it was honestly really... It was so jaunty and kind of funny sounding. I found such a weird game. In like a good way, but also in kind of like an off-putting way. Which is part of its charm, you know? Also didn't grow up playing that, but I can appreciate it for all of its weirdness. Okay, I think that might be fine. Uh, I'm trying racing out these lines. Hint of a nose. Hint. Just a little hint of a nose. Yeah, that's good. I think. Let me flip it. Let me uh, make this a little bit smaller. A little bit less volume. Just like a little bit less volume. Doesn't need to be a whole lot less volume. Yeah, that'll work. Ah, oh, don't need to make the foreshortening all that amazing. It is a shame they didn't put Mario Galaxy 2 on the Switch. I hear that, honestly. I never got to play um, Mario Galaxy 2, or wasn't there a third one? 
I played a little bit of Galaxy. Galaxy was also not a game that I super got to play, so I don't have any real nostalgia for it. I just remember, I got to play the demo like, like in Walmart, you know? There's only two, okay. Um, I got to play the demo like in Walmart and I was like, this is a very well controlled, like polished game. It just, it, with the motion controls and all of the gravity topsy-turviness, it, it was, ooh, <laughs> I was, I was, I was afraid, I was frightened. I did not end up uh, making it a goal to to get that game because I was I was like this is disorienting and I know I would not be any good at it. Mario Odyssey, love that game. You know, like I never even considered myself one to really like Mario games legitimately because so many Mario games, um, like the 3D Mario games, uh, were so just like uh, I I didn't. Either, I either didn't own them, so I didn't get to play them a whole lot growing up, so I didn't have any of the nostalgia, didn't get it, get, didn't ever really get into the gameplay, etc., etc. Um, all that good stuff, and and then and then Mario Odyssey comes out, and I finally have a chance to like buy it and and play it and enjoy it, and you know it's pretty damn good. The, no like kind of overwhelming or scary like. Uh, like mechanics to learn like with galaxy and no like kind of frustrating physics engine that makes me See red like Mario sunshine, you know, just a good 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 fun bright color hat brightly colored happy fun time I really love Odyssey. Odyssey is very good It also came out um, It came out shortly after I got my current job uh so it was, it, you know, I had I had money and I was, I was having a having a fun time having actual adult grown up money. However, whenever I first started my job and got my switch, I was not graduated from college yet. The my job hired a full time college student before they even graduated. Which thank you to them, but oh my god, I had to have a full time job and also be a full time college student, and that was a nightmare. That was the worst. That sucked! So now, for me, Mario Odyssey represents kind of like a getaway. <laughs> it was kind of a getaway because uh, Mario Odyssey, of course, was very fun and very brightly colored and happy. So it was like, I would go, I would play it between breaks or or anytime I had breathing room. Uh, and it would just be, it would represent this time where I could turn off my brain from all of the horseshit that I had to do in real life. <laughs> between either working or doing homework or whatever what have you and then I could just I could just be a funny little bing bing wahoo man what's your opinion on uh, the Mario series it's such a gem yo I, ne I never got to play any of the paper Mario's growing up either but um I got to watch a playthrough of a thousand year door and oh my god it's so it's so good <laughs> it's so good I I didn't I I'm not one to even really like it's more of an RPG game yeah um and I'm, I'm fucking, I'm garbage at maintaining, like, paying attention to RPGs. However, if I get to watch someone play them, like, do a playthrough watch, uh, I, uh, do, I do so much better. I do, but, m m well, I, uh, I don't know how to phrase that sentence. Um, I do much better watching RPGs because, of course, RPGs are much more, like, story-centric. Um... And if I can just like skip through all of the very repetitive battles and random encounters and bosses and whatnot and just get to the story or what, then I I, en I end up enjoying it and intaking the story and all the character writing and all the charm way better. Uh, I tried the 64 one, but I can never complete it. Neither the one for Wii. Just kind of like the turn-based actions are still kind of re um, reaction. That's true, honestly. That's honestly why I really like something like Undertale because Undertale, the thing about RPGs is that they're just so, so many of them are just scrolling through menus and then hitting a button and then you just read the text it says what it did um <laughs> but uh, something like undertale or something like paper mario where you kind of have a little bit more action and input with it uh undertale where it's more like a bullet hell and you actually have to like react and play the game it's it's it pays off it it, it ends up holding my uh Holding my attention way better than, than most RPGs. That's kind of why I fell off Pokemon. I used to love, of course, playing Pokemon games, but then as I got older, I stopped getting kind of hyped or excited for them because I realized I would never finish them or get very far in them. Because every time I would get them, I'd be like, yeah, Pokemon! And then I'd play them for a bit and I'd be bored. 
And this was before they did like any of the petting or the grooming or anything like that. So it literally was just like run around, do some puzzles, click through menus. That's the gameplay. <laughs> but with uh, with Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, I, I watched a playthrough of that. It was really good. Really enjoyed it. And I got to also watch a playthrough of Origami King and I really enjoyed that. Like, um, I definitely, from what I remember seeing of it, it wasn't uh, like, I guess, as a deep or en enriching of, of writing, I guess, is like Thousand Year Door. I haven't seen any of the other ones, like, um, what, like Color Splash, Sticker Star? Um, isn't there an, also a, uh, more than that? There's other ones, I, I have not gotten to see, like, pretty much any of those other ones, um, but I am curious about them. Thousand Year Door is the best one? I think that's what I hear, usually, yeah. The, um, is that the one with the, uh, Count Black and the, like, rainbow butterfly? Right, is that? Also very good character designs. Very fun character designs. Self-emotional ties with the OG, though? That's understandable. That's Super Paper Mario. Oh, okay. Nintendo seems to think that the part that sells is the paper aspect, not the story. Yeah, very interesting. I very I don't know how they got that takeaway. So maybe I've seen Super Paper Mario 2. I do know that I've definitely seen Thousand Year Door. Um, but okay, Super Paper Mario. Interesting, interesting. It's been a hot second since I've seen these playthroughs also, so I'm definitely gonna get them mixed up and forget which ones go where. Malamar, let's go, let's go. Let me draw my little dummy here. Why, who was the person, you know, I, I want so badly to be a fly on the wall in regards to who came up with the concept for fucking Malomart and who, who composed this song? I want so badly to know the creative process behind it. Oh my God. It's just so weird and funny. In Twilight Princess of all games, they're like kind of grim dark take on Zelda, and we have this in that game. Of course, oh god, this is completely lopsided actually. This is what happens when I talk too much while drawing. I can draw completely lopsided. Got a hard lean going. I've never finished a Nintendo game. Damn. What's it like to not be a true gamer? <laughs> okay, can we transform tool? Thank you. You know, um, it was kind of funny though. Like, uh, I I did a little I did a little fun little thing um, that you guys might get to see sometime in November. Um, but I did get asked the question, like. Uh, like, how many Zeldas have you played? Like, um, and I've played many a Zelda. However, the amount of Zeldas I have played versus the amount I have beaten? Ho ho! Ho ho! Ho ho! It's a big, pretty big difference! Fun fact! Oh, fuck. I've played, like, Ocarina, Majora's, uh, Wind Waker, uh, fucking Twilight Princess. I've now played Skyward HD. I didn't get to play it back then. Um, I played Hyrule Warriors, Age of Calamity, I played Breath of the Wild, of course. I played Link Between Worlds, uh, Spirit Tracks. I have beaten... I have for sure, for certain, 100% beaten, not 100% of the game, but absolutely, like, finished the story aspect. I have for sure beaten... <sighs> Spirit Tracks? Wind Waker. A Link Between Worlds. And Breath of the Wild. And no others! <laughs> Oh, if you tried to get me to finish, I've come close to beating Majora's twice. Um, I played Majora's illegitimately, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. I played Majora's illegitimately um, and got pretty close to beating it. However, that was right before the 3D remake uh, on 3DS came out. So I got pretty close to beating it. Then the 3D remake came out and I got the 3D remake. So I was like, I'll just 
beat it on the 3D remake. However, I also got very close to the end of the 3D remake. And then my friend who also likes Zelda was like, I've never gotten to play Majora's. And I'm like, oh, do you want to borrow my copy? So then I, and that was years ago now. They still have it and they still need to just give it back to me. Like, it's not like they took it or anything. It's just literally, we've been too busy to make the transaction happen. So I, I've come very close to beating Majora's twice, but I just never have. I have only finished Ocarina and Breath of the Wild. For Ocarina, I finished the 3D remake though. Yeah, I have, I don't even remember. I want to say for Ocarina, I only be, I don't remember how far I got on Nintendo 64, but I only ever got like really far, definitely for sure on, um, on GameCube. And uh, on, the, on the GameCube version. And I definitely made it to the Shadow Temple, but I do not remember if I ever beat Bongo Bongo or not. I remember being stuck on him for the longest, longest time. And I, but I, I want to say that I made it to the Spirit Temple, but I, but I never got through it. I think I may have gotten to the Spirit Temple, but never actually like played it or anything, because I don't remember freaking anything about it, dude. So I've never, I've definitely never beaten Ocarina of Time. Thank you for the follow. -up. Fuck Bongo Bongo! Yeah! Fuck Bongo Bongo! I fucking hate Bongo Bongo's ass! Like, whatever! Finally time to sleep. Thank you for stopping by, dude. I uh, hope to see you at the next one. And, and sleep well. Sleep. Sleep well. Fuck Bongo Bongo though. God damn it. I, I saw so- I, I kept- I fucked up against Bongo Bongo so many times. I thought to myself, I have to be fucking up something super obvious, right? I- I'm fu- it's just- this is impossible. This is fucking horseshit impossible. And then I watched like a playthrough of it to like get some tips and they just did it. They just fucking did it. The same way that I've been doing it, but they just fucking did it and did it well. They were good at the game. That was the difference. And I just sat there like, cool. You made it look so fucking easy. <laughs> why can't I just do it that way? Ugh. And that's why I can't even definitively say that I've ever even beat Bongo Bongo. I want to say that I did, finally, but I can't even remember. It, I, I just remember struggling on that motherfucker for so long. I get why they never brought back the post office in, in New Horizons, because it was kind of a superfluous step in, in regards to mailing things. But also, I miss the NPCs at the post office, and I miss this music. It was all so good. Have you guys ever played Metopia? I've never played it. I've seen playthroughs of it. Um, and it looks so funny and good. I thought about getting it on Switch. I honestly- I'm very bad about, like, being interested in video games- in video games, and then, uh, never getting game and playing game. I'm- I'm so much better at, like, just watching them and- and maintaining attention that way, because, you know, don't have to pay for it at that point. I don't have to deal with any hard gameplay that I might not be able to beat. Ugh. What was one game that I kind of wanted to get? I really wanted to get Sonic Colors remade, Remastered. Um, Sonic Colors Ultimate. And I just never did. The, uh... I love Sonic Colors. I should. The thing is, though, is that also that, like... I'm really bad about, even if I'm enjoying a video game, like, I'll play it for a bit and then just, I'll fall off of it and then never touch it again. Like, I loved Age of Calamity. I was really enjoying Age of Calamity. Never beat it. There are plenty of Sonic games that I really enjoyed and also just never beat. There's also Sonic games that I did not enjoy and did not beat subsequently, such as Sonic Mania. Not because it was bad, as many people will tell you, it was very good. What the fuck is this? Tomodachi Life. Of course it is. I was like, Vocaloid? In my Nintendo? It's more likely than you think. I digress. Sonic Mania is very good. However, I'm garbage at, at Classic Sonic. Oh, I'm bad at Classic Sonic. I'm only good at Modern Sonic. You give me a Sonic Adventure, Sonic Adventure 2. Oh, I'll, I'll play it till the cows come home. Sonic Colors, Sonic Unleashed, let's go, love it. 
Sonic Mania. Fuck. I'm gonna be angry. I'm gonna be so mad playing Sonic Mania. Utopia is very cool. I just need to do the district's part. Oh, yeah. Um... Yeah, no, Miitopia looks like it, it It just seems like such a fun, like, little game with surprisingly also very polished and well thought out gameplay. So, like, what better way to have fun designing, like, your little characters and then getting them to interact with each other and just doing shenanigans? Like, what a what a good concept for a game. Why me Tomodachi Light did so good. This is super lopsided. This is great. We're doing awesome. Ugh, every time I have to draw Link's hair from the, um, from his left to our right, it's, oh, it's a nightmare. Because his stupid part is on his right, our left. Every time I think I've got it figured out, I don't. I don't. I tried a Sonic game once and I thought it was boring. Aw, oh, that's fair. Would, uh, which one did you try out? I know so many people that <laughs> they try out Sonic games and they go uh, modern Sonic games and uh, the games like throw you into a booster and they and, and they just fucking make you go and, and they're like, help, help, help. I'm confused. Everything's happening so fast. I don't understand. And I'm just kind of like, that's Sonic, baby. That's Sonic, baby. Oh man, I remember when people were throwing a fit over uh, horses and the uh, physics for, you know, I it's probably been, it's been such a hot second since I played horses that maybe who knows maybe if I played it now um, I'd have a different opinion. But again, I'm really bad at classic Sonic. Uh, so whenever I played forces, I remember playing as classic Sonic and being like, oh, this is the most bearable that it's ever been playing as classic Sonic. Like I'm actually I'm I'm having fun, and then people complained about it nonstop. They, they hated it. They hated the way Classic Sonic played in that game. And I was like, ah, oh, okay. Um, I remember someone, ooh, they were so, they, they, they were pretty mad. They were big mad. There was like a beginning opening section of, um, I think it was Chemical Plant Zone, where uh, you start out, you're going down a ramp, uh, and then the ramp curves up, and you're supposed to either spin dash or drop dash. Um, uh, over the the hump of the uh, the the loop basically like it, it it dips down and then curves right back up in like a semicircle kind of thing if you just like run down that ramp you're not gonna have enough momentum to uh to to make it over that that hump um which is why the game wants you to drop dash or spin dash over it um someone got so mad that you can't just like hold down right and get over it like you won't have enough momentum they were like, this is disgusting. The physics engine is broken. It sucks. And I'm like, guys, listen, I get that Sonic games have had um, like a rocky life in that people either love them or hate them, but holy fuck, it's okay. <laughs> that is not the game breaking horrible glitch bug you think it is. It's just, it's just not what the game wants you to do at that instance. Just do a spin dash. Just do a spin dash! <laughs> Think it was the first one? Yeah. Nah. A lot of classic games. I I I I I don't I don't get bored with them. I'm I'm just bad at them. And so I end up rage quitting because I I can't beat them. Ironically, I saw the first few animated series and loved it. Thought it was funny. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of Sonic cartoons are are very they're very entertaining. Now, some of them are a little rough. I'm looking at you, Sonic Underground. But at the very least, with with cases like that, in, in my experience, they're so bad that they're funny, usually. <laughs> so at least there's that. But God, like Sonic X, really love Sonic X. Um, the Sonic OVA movie that was going to be like a, it was going to be um, an animated series and then they just ended up making it into an OVA. So good, love that to death. Sonic Boom, um, very different flavor of, of writing for Sonic, but still very entertaining. Sonic is like one is like my ride or die series. It's like my favorite thing ever, by the way. Just fun fact about me. <coughs> Ugh. I 
I'm, I'm excited for the, um, the new one that's getting re uh, rumored about, Sonic Prime? Rain not Rangers. Rangers is the new um is the leak name of the, the new game. Yeah, was it Sonic Prime? Um and I I didn't read a whole lot about what was it? Uh like an either an interview or a leak in regards to like its plot being about like interdimensional, like different Sonics or whatnot. Like interested to see what that's all about, if that ends up being what it is all about, so does this look good, or am I just not focusing on it enough to tell if it actually does look good? Let me turn this guy down so I can kind of focus on... I think it looks okay. Lonk looking good, thank you. Okay, that's, that's a little validating. Getting a second outside opinion, there we go. We're almost done with the uh, character lines, so then I can start. I don't know if I'm gonna have a whole lot of background lines. Maybe here I'll have a background, and then maybe here I'll have a little bit of a background. Um, and then for this one and this one, it'll probably be gradients. I might do a little bit of background here. That that won't be a whole lot, but then we can probably get to a little bit of backgrounds, and hopefully those won't take too long, and then I'll be able to get to flatting in some colors. I'm hoping that I can get this guy done um, tonight, whether it be entirely on stream or otherwise, we'll see, but uh, these, this is the second page in an update that I think I should have honestly had done like, like maybe last week. My, my buffer currently is on, um, including this update, it will be seven ahead, which is almost two months. That's kind of typical for what my buffer is. I like for it to be a full, like, eight, a full two months, but, uh, sometimes it doesn't always work out that way. Yeah. Um, but I'm gonna try and get it back up to that eight. Aw, oh, night, Jared. Thanks for stopping by, friend. I'm gonna try and get this back up to a full eight, so that will hopefully mean I get this guy done, and then starting tomorrow... If I can get two more pages done before Wednesday, which is kind of a tall order, but then I'll get it back up to eight. Uh, gotta wait. At most, usually I've been able to, if I'm really like, like grinding away at drawing comic pages, I've usually been able to get like three pages done a week, which maybe I should try and do a little bit more instead of trying to get, I guess, more than that done a week. Just to make it a little bit more manageable on myself, but I I, I end up do like uh, impulsively either doing other stuff in regards to art or cosplay or I'm hanging out with friends, so I, I don't have the time to get ahead in comic pages. You know, I try to maintain having a life. It gets in the way of me working. Curse you, social life. Nah, but All right, let's see. I can kind of get rid of some of this stuff. I might, uh, let me leave, let me leave that a little bit so I can just draw the face and have the chin and ears for a reference point. If I fall silent, it's because I'm I'm trying to laser in, trying to turn on the artist focus, you know? I'm always, you know, like, noses kind of just go in the center of the face. But then, like, if I just draw a nose in what I think is the center without actually, like, paying attention to it, then it ends up pretty fucking wonky. Yo, one time I heard a fucking... <laughs> Sorry, immediately getting distracted, but one time I heard, like, a... There was a Sega, like a, not a Sega, uh, a Nintendo music mix, and they had the audacity to include Sonic music. <laughs> I wasn't, like, upset, actually. It was quite pleasant because it was, you know, the Sonic songs are very good. Sonic music is very good. But it was very funny, and I went to the comments immediately to be like, did anyone else point that out? And of course, of course they did. They were like, uh, when was, since when was Sonic a Nintendo game? But I felt vindicated in that moment, being like, haha, I caught you in a lie. <laughs> 
I didn't say anything about it because I was just like, yeah, it doesn't, it literally, what, 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 what a thing to care about and leave a comment about, but you know, my observational skills, they're just, they're sharp as attack, let me tell you. Actually, let me, uh, let me leave that in so that it'll be more reference points for me to add eyes in. Since he's looking down, there's kind of a, like, a lidded thing going on, because, you know, when you look down, your eyes kind of close a little bit. But that can kind of change the expression, so I don't want to make it too... That's a little bit of a tilt going on, I think, yeah. Damn it. Yo, um... I don't know if anyone's gonna know what the fuck I'm talking about, but uh, the other day I was, I saw a TikTok uh, first of um, a game, someone like reacting to playing like a, like a, sc like a scary game, uh, naturally, cause you know, October, perfect time to play scary games. Um, and they were doing like a chase scene and they were freaking out and they kept turning around and looking at the monster chasing them or whatever. And um, I, I was like, ah, oh, dang, that's a really, that's a really, <laughs> yeah, it's a crazy monster design. Like that's a, it's, it's, it's evocative, it works, you know? It's kind of, it's a little goofy looking, but that's probably part of the, it's probably, probably an intentional design choice because, you know, there's so many horror games that use, like, goofy looking, goofy looking character designs, uh, to evoke, like, a, kind of a, well, what, what's the word, um, like a juxtaposition. Um, they kind of make, like, a goofier character design, but then that's all the more, like, you wouldn't expect it to be so scary when it's, like, fucking chasing you down, like, a vent or whatever. <clears throat> So I saw that video, and I was like, oh, well, uh, in, in new game, uh, that's interesting, or whatever, you know, that, it looks like this is a, like, a little funny, little funny video of someone freaking out while they're getting chased in a horror game. Okay, whatever. Um, and then, like, a few days later, I'm watching, like, Vine Sauce do, like, a spooktober, like, scary game compilation. Um, and, and he pulls up this, like, Poppy Playtime game, and I'm like, okay, yeah, no, another classic, like, uh, Haunted Doll kind of a spooky game or whatever um he ends up playing it it's got some pretty promising like mechanics and whatnot in it and gameplay or and you know i'm pretty interested in it and then uh he ends up going through that same chase sequence with the with a character design that was from that game and i was like oh it's this game oh it comes full circle and that just kind of made kind of made me think for a second like how many times is like like Vinny in particular played a game before it gets like super duper popular and then it ends up like freaking taking off so but um and it will be for the most random of games, like that, that Baldi game or whatever. Uh, but uh, this one, this one, you know, looked pretty promising in terms of like gameplay and like art design and whatnot. So I, 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 I am definitely very curious to see more of that one. I think it was just like, it just had like a chapter one and it's going to have like more releases later on. So I hope that like development for that thing goes well or whatever and they can get stuff stuff developed and put out in like a timely manner and kind of take advantage of this little bit of i guess that's getting talked about since of course i saw that TikTok of that other streamer reacting to it and then i see vinnie play it a couple days later so hopefully it's it's getting getting a little bit of traction for it you know we love to see we love to see indie devs win as long as they don't suck ass but i digress a little bit of stubble. Link's little tiny itty bitty stubble. It's very important to me. I used to just draw like a circle, but for some reason putting in like the blots for the eyes, it kind of helps. Flip. There we go. Oh shit, that's kind of funky. Oh. Uh. 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 Yeah. Yeah.
I'll also do this, like, I'll kind of blot in the eyebrows, even though I do, you know, of course, give my characters colorful eyebrows in regards to their, you know, hair color. But it just is sometimes, sometimes it just looks better to not have these weird parallel lines. I don't know. I gotta figure out a happy medium, I guess. So, that looks, that looks pretty good, I think. I think. Hopefully. I, you know, like, far be it for me to be like, uh -huh, it's streaming hard, but the, um, it looks cool. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, far be it for me to be like, streaming hard, but, like, it does happen sometimes that because I, I am also, of course, um, half focused on, a uh, on, on maintaining a, an entertaining, an, enter an, an entertaining stream, I don't focus entirely on the drawing, so sometimes I'll come away from it being like, ah, oh, this isn't very good, and then I end up having to redo it a little bit. But, um, of course, doing streams after so long, you kind of, you kind of get a sense for how to do both at the same time, and not have to <laughs> redo everything after streaming for like three hours or whatever. So, kind of still have a little bit of lopsided, I think, on this eye. Give me a second. When I tilt it, it doesn't look all that bad, but whenever I fix the angle to be straight up and down, I feel like it looks a little messed up. Occupied. Occupied. No one's allowed to look at me while I'm making art. Honestly, fun fact, I think I almost gave Link the wrong chin. <laughs> I, I, I reduced down facial features to being very basic shapes so that they're easier for me to draw so like you know how there, there are like face shapes like very distinct face shapes irl like oval shaped faces heart shaped faces certain shapes of like noses or whatever like I, I will try to like reflect those in my art to an extent but um i'm back hello jess i will try to reflect those in my art to an extent uh but also sometimes I, I do look at like examples of like, oh, this is what an oval shaped face looks like. This is what an oblong shaped face looks like. This is a diamond shaped face. And I'm like, I can't tell, I can't tell a distinctive difference. I like, they, they are different shapes. They are different, but I don't know what about them is different. So I'll end up just kind of exaggerating them or like coming up with sh like, shortcuts and, and calling it good. So like for Link here, he's got a little bit more, it's not like it's a super pointy chin, but it is a little bit more pointed of a chin than someone like Zelda or Groose will have. Groose and Zelda have very flat, very squared off chins because it's just an easy way for me to make a difference in their face shape. I don't know exactly what different jaw and or chin or ch different, like what they're called. And if they're reflected properly, like they would be in real life, they're probably cartoonishly exaggerated, but it it's easier to draw, so, you know? Fuck it. As long as it doesn't get into, like, caricature territory, you gotta- you, you, if it works, it works. In my opinion. In my- in my onion. Alright. I think we're pretty good on- let me end off these shapes so that I can magic wand them all. Okay, select everything on this layer. Invert. And let me make sure that everything's going in right. Yeah. Alright. Turn that white. Copy paste. Turn the under layer black. Order it a little bit thicker. There we go. There's that guy. Let me go down here. Um, I don't remember if I cut off- okay, I did not cut off this guy. I don't remember if I did the shoe or not. Okay. Uh, there's nothing on the inside, I don't think. Oh, that. I think we're good, I think we're good. Alright. Same business. Fill in. Looking good. Yeah. Cool. Alright, now let me see. 
I'm gonna try and do just a little bit of background line work here. Oh, and my cat, my shoulders hurt a little bit. Let me lean. Ah! I have to fix my posture so that I'm more reclined and relaxed in my chair. Ow! Ah! My neck. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm coping. You know, um, I kind of mentioned this before, but for <laughs> for the people that do not come to my stream every now and then, you know, I've gotten to a point where I can kind of, kind of bullshit in uh, lines for backgrounds and whatnot. So like here we have Link looking down at his arm and we have a foot here. So obviously the, the camera is pointed down. So we're mostly going to see like carpet and, and floor. So there's not going to be a whole lot of detail to include into a background shot here. Um, but I'm gonna try and like I'll try to make this I don't know what it's called whenever it's the border on between the wall and the floor but uh, you know the crown molding kind of thing um, so I'll try to make that this and then I'll try and make like the rug that is in the hallways so um, I'll do that nonsense uh, not super concerned on the perspective because it is just such a small amount of the shot I'm not gonna worry too much about it um, this may, this may be harder up here because of the way Link's legs, they're kind of making the perspective point this direction. We'll see if this doesn't really kick my ass. I hope not, because if I have to change things around, I'm going to be really annoyed. But a door would probably be about like back here. Theoretically, like Groos should be here, um, but I'm just not drawing him in for the sake of simplicity. It, do it's, it doesn't matter. He doesn't need to be there. Let me uh, turn off the character lines a little bit so you can see through them. Okay. Turn that back up to like a 0.5. Let's say the door is like right there. He fucks with the scaling. I just kind of eyeball it because having to like put in a perspective ruler and figure out the perfect perspective for every shot is not entirely realistic. <laughs> like it's fine because in all like reality and honestly people do pay uh, like there are plenty of people that look at the art in each shot and they're just like wow nice like this looks great and I'm like thank you I spent a lot of time on it thank you for appreciating it but there's definitely plenty of people that just you know like kind of read it and then they scroll on so I really if, if you are a person making a comic do not murder yourself over the finer details I promise it will be okay and sometimes you just gotta say it's not perfect but it's it's good enough let me just kind of a little bit, uh, like, this is gonna be behind Zerolda, behind Sheik, that's not, that's also behind the speech bubble, so it's not super imperative that this looks beautiful and amazing, just has to convey the scene well enough. And see, and the rug. So, let me push it back a little bit. And there's a rug out here, too. And there probably would be a little bit of hallway showing. Maybe a little bit. I don't know. Probably not too terribly much. Uh, but I think that looks fine the way it is. I think that might... I think that might be good. Yeah, because I would put in a little bit of background here. But I think the only background that you would feasibly see is, like, very distant hallway out the doors. Um, I would include a little bit of hall I would include a little bit of background if you would see a door looking at, at at link from this angle but I don't think you would so I think that's probably fine but yeah all right uh, hang on kind of looking at like, a little bit here and I kind of want to fix this collarbone a little bit give me a second what's this from it sounds like something from like Mario Kart 
pr predict the poll. Everybody votes channel. That's not Mario Kart at all. I was wrong. <laughs> Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, I guess I'll start flatting in some colors now. Let's go. Let's go. That only took an hour and a half to basically finish. The only real lines that I had were like the dummies for Link and then the full lines for Zelda. So that's the, like, I think the majority of the lines in an hour and a half. Not bad. Not bad. In my opinion, not bad. Let me get Link's base color here. Luckily for me, Link is most of the color on this page. Uh, not all of it, but most of it, so haha. -ha. I would use a fill bucket if it was just the same character over and over again, but it doesn't matter. So we have Groose, Groose's little boot there. Spoiler alert, Groose, but most people in my server already knew that, so Groose boot. Groose boot. Let's see. Let me get the common white going. That's not paying attention to all my layers. There we go. You know, it also helps. I, I was complaining about my neck kind of hurting a little bit, but it's a good thing I finished lines when I did because now I don't really need to be like, Punching forward, being worried about all the little details. You know? What's what's going on there? Stupid- I'm on the wrong layer. There we go. Now I can kind of- you know, like, I- Flatting line- uh, flat, flatting colors in can be kind of tedious and sometimes my least favorite part. But, uh, in doing comic pages, it's- sometimes It's a little bit of a relief. Because what with comic pages, um, I end up- I end up uh, having to draw so many lines that by the time I'm done with it, I'm like, please, salvation, anything, give me a break. I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> Line art, I feel like, is my strong suit. And, and, and that doesn't mean that it's easy. <laughs> uh, I feel like most of the structure, so much of my art and process is built around, of course, line art though that I can't just like I can't just not do line art that's just not how I do art you know there are people that are just like you know just clean up the sketch or or just paint I can't do that and sometimes I have fun line arting but a lot of the time what hap a lot of the times what happens is that I, I get very bogged down with um with detail work and not even like, and I don't even do like super tiny details, which is which is why it feels so dumb to be like, yeah, I get bogged down with detail work, because it's not like I even do super amazing details. Okay, I don't know why my field bucket decided to do to, that that was necessary, but whatever. But yeah, no, like it happens a lot that like I just <sighs> maybe I won't even not necessarily I guess detail work even, but. Maybe that, like, I'll look at, like, the folds of clothing and I'll be like, nope, not good enough. And then I'll sit there and redraw it or, like, fix one little fold, like, several times. Or I'll, I'll fuss with, like, the specific pixels of a chin or a nose or something. And, and as if it matters that much. Like, you know, in the end, do I think that it makes it look better if I kind of, like, fuss with it a little bit? Sure, but... <sighs> Is it worth the amount of time that I spend? Probably not. I, I need to get a little bit better about not getting so hung up on... Just gotta develop, cause, cause, gotta develop my sense of being able to go a little bit faster with these things. Cause I'm capable of it and I've done it before. It just happens a lot that if I don't, if I'm not careful, I can get stuck on, uh, on the little things. And they really get me down. And they don't need to. I'm capable of overcoming it. I just don't always remember to. And that's our baby. <laughs> See, buttons, buttons. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Alright, uh, all 
go down here and do this, and then I can do the uh, his tights. This is this is title puzzle swap. Okay, I was like, this is either Yoshi or it's Animal Crossing, but it's definitely not Animal Crossing. But I thought it might have been Animal Crossing because of the accordion. And I thought it was Yoshi because of the that lead synth or that kind of you know the that noise. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's not that. It's not either of those. It's puzzle swap, which I think is like a street pass thing. But I was completely wrong. Whoops. <laughs> Hells. There's a vibe right here. You know what one thing is kind of tedious though? Like, flat against some colors can kind of be... It's a nice breakup of the action whenever I've just done so much line art. Like, f f flatting in the colors is so simple in comparison. But then, like, I do the thing where I color the line art. And that does not take very long. It really doesn't. And yet, whenever I have to do it, I'm like... <sighs> Do you have a favorite OC or an OC you love so much and tell everyone that they are your baby? I would say that um, maybe Dajado, that uh, that green that green little weirdo that I showed earlier, uh, they they are pretty close to one. They're basically one of my favorites, if just because I come back to them for no reason so often. Um, but uh, I also very much enjoy a different D and D OC called Yanya. He is a kitsune, so he's a he's a shapeshifter. He has two faces, um, both like a human face and um, and a, a furry like fox face or whatever. And oh my god, that's my son. I love him so much. I adore him. Baby boy, baby. That's his fox face, and this is his human face. I love him so much. You remember him? Yes. Thank you. I'm glad. I drew him a shit ton. I also commissioned a shit ton of people to draw him. He. I love him. Ugh. Sunyan. He is, uh, in D&D, I played him in Pathfinder, specifically. So he- Pathfinder has, uh, the D20 PFSRD website has a few hybrid classes. Uh, one of them is called Scald. Um, so it is literally a bard and a barbarian, uh, mashed together. So instead of, like, having your normal bard songs, um, that kind of inspire courage, inspire confidence, um, you have Raging Song. So barbarians have a Rage Song that they can activate, which makes them- super fucking good at uh, fighting. Um, and what Scalds do is they give that rage to uh, other other people. Like anyone that listens to the song, they can give them rage, which is super good for fighting and melee fights. This is um, a reference. This is like a base outfit for, base outfit reference. This is what I commissioned most people to draw him with. Theoretically, he does have like, um, his full outfit is like a, like a, like a vest. Like a red vest and like a, I think a yellow scarf, and they're kind of like they're sheer like mesh see-through um, that go on top. That like that's kind of the full outfit, and he's also got uh, usually like um, pieces like thigh armor, and he's also got a uh, a breastplate that goes kind of like that. That's kind of the full look usually, but that's that's like in the context of D and D, him wearing like studded leather and whatnot, but. This is just like his base outfit, and he's like a heavy metal rocker. He <laughs> he has two moms. I love him, so I'm going to start talking about him. I'm sorry. Um, he's got two moms, and his origin story is that one of his moms is a, I believe, I don't know how to say this word, luthier. Um, she makes uh, string instruments like violins, vi uh, violas, uh, etc. Um, and his other mom is a weaponsmith that makes uh, like swords and axes and whatnot. And so he came about by. Um, combining the two of their passions. He likes to make weapons and he likes to make in make, make instruments. So you know how like Marceline from Adventure Time has the axe that is a guitar? Yeah, that's basically what he's got going on. Um, he has just any weapon that he finds, he, he multi-purposes into an, an instrument and he plays it and then he just bashes it over people's heads and I love him. He's so much fun. I love him so much. Ah! Fuck. Um, characters also that I very much enjoy are any character that I I had I had many uh I had many uh an original comic webcomic idea or series um one of my first ever like original 
webcomic ideas was a, a, a series called Demise, um, and the uh, main character for that was, his name was Sunan, um, and I uh, drew him relentlessly, so much, drew him so much, he was, he was my muse for the longest time. Um, and I tried to make that comic happen several times, uh, but I, again, was not very good at writing, so I kept- and also I wasn't good at planning, um, which played in- it was both a byproduct and also played into the fact that I wasn't very good at writing. Um, so I would try and start the comic with, like, no plan, just because I was always convinced that if I tried to sit down and plan it, I would lose steam on it, so I was like, I just gotta do it, I just gotta jump right into it, and just gotta- because cause that's the only way that I know I'm gonna be able to, to do it. Um, that was a lie, uh, but- so I would always try and jump into it, wouldn't have much of a plan, would always fall behind on my, my own update schedule that I would set for myself, would always get in writer's block, wouldn't know where to go, the writing wouldn't be very strong, no no foreshadowing, no, no, you know, no intent behind so many things. Um, I think I had to restart that comic like three or, three or four times, honestly, because I kept on, kept on trying to write it and it wouldn't go anywhere. Um... And then eventually, I, I, because I had to restart it so many times, and I got rid of it so many times, I was like, you know what? I, this is, this is, this is my, this is my, this is my baby. This is, uh, I, I love Sunan, I love this comic, but it's just not, it's just not paying off, you know? I'll, I'll, I'll try, I'll try to, to do a different, I'll try to do a different comic, and come back to this one, once I've got more experience, you know? I'll do that, haha. <laughs> Planning, thinking ahead, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. And so then I tried to tackle uh, different original comic ideas. One was called uh, Hear No Evil. And that I also tried to do like two or three times. <laughs> I think I may have only restarted it once. I think, if I remember correctly, I think I may have only restarted it once. Um, and whenever I restarted it the second time, I, I liked it a little bit more. Um, looking back on it, still wasn't perfect, but I like it more than the first way I tried to do it. I digress. Um, the main character for that one was named Devin. So then Devin was like my main muse for like a very long time. I, I still very much enjoy Devin. He's he's kind of like just a nerd weeb character and because he's like a nerd weeb character he's a lot of fun um, to like make memes with and make little like dumb jokes with. Uh, he's also... He also, I made him around the time that I was figuring out being like non-binary uh, and trans mask and like at the same time. So uh, he he is a map, but he is also non-binary, uh, and 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 enjoys the more feminine like expressions of gender and whatnot. So I was able to like kind of project that through him, and that was a lot of fun. And so I still enjoy uh, drawing him a lot too. Um, but definitely don't draw those guys as much as I used to. So Nan definitely really fell off for a while there. Devin really fell off, but I still draw Devin even more than I draw Sunan these days. Uh, but they, they always have a soft, special place in my heart, um, even if I don't draw them as much anymore. Uh, who else? Um, as far as like recent OCs go, like most of my Dragon Balls OCs are kind of the most recent, so they're definitely like the freshest on my brain between like Udemisu and Grandma. Like, uh, since I wrote for them so recently. I, I very much enjoy Udemisu, um, and Udemisu's design kind of snapped with that one. Honestly, kind of snapped. I'm, but <laughs> the uh, because so much music that I still listen to these days, a lot of my inspiration and ideas come from music, and a lot of music that I still listen to, I would attribute to them specifically. Um, I'm still listening to that music, so I'm still thinking about them. Uh, and I still get ideas to draw them every now and then. However, I do a lot of my music listening to while I'm in the car. And so I get like an idea and I'm like, yeah, I'll draw that whenever I get home, maybe. Like, that's a little idea. <laughs> and then I get home. But by the time I get home, I've listened to different music or I've thought about other things. And then my ADHD brain has sh has just shit the idea out and I won't remember it whatsoever at all. So it's gone. Because that's how, that's how it works. We love that. And it's not like I can pull out like a notes app and type it out while I'm driving, so it's just gone. <laughs> it's just gone. You know how it is. Oh wait, I think I accidentally, uh, give me a second here. It happens a lot that I, with these like sweat drops, I'll try to color them in white. Um, and then I color them in without thinking. And then I end up messing them up. There we go. I just had to fix those really quick. Okay. Oh yeah. 
go over here. Gotta flatten this guy. Where are my pallets? Pallets, pallets. There we go. <laughs> um, I say this only because I was looking at my pallets uh, and saw the colors for it. Literally page two of the comic, you see uh, that Link, in fact, does have a tattoo on his upper arm, on this arm. Now, that being said, I am aware that page two for my comic came out uh, in 2016, so that is five years ago now. So it's not like I expect anyone to um, remember it if they either started the comic back then, or remember it if they started the comic even recently. That was that was over a hundred pages ago at this point. But I do think it's funny how um, I have not tried to keep it a secret. It has been there since page two, uh, and yet I I definitely saw whenever page 70-ish, 80? I think it was page 70. No, 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 it was page 80, I think. I don't remember. Um, The, the page where you get to see Link's second job, basically. Uh, that came out, and of course you can see his upper arm and you can see his tattoo, and um, even then, that page came out, and then no one said anything, and then a few pages later, uh, we get another wide shot of Link, and you see his upper arm, and then someone finally reblogs it and tags it like, Wait, does Link have a tattoo? And I'm like, my friend. My love. <laughs> We've been known. <laughs> Whenever I'm bored, I draw something and suddenly bam, a new OC, I will put a few up for adoption. Honestly, yeah. I feel for you. Like, character design is just fun. I've, I've thought about, like, making character designs for adoption. Um, I, I did once. A while back, like a long time ago, um, and I, I made three of them, and two of them sold, and the third one never sold. But I, I just never made an attempt to like keep up with it and like still advertise it. M maybe, maybe someday. Um, I digress. Where the fuck? Oh god, dang it! Hang on, sorry, wrong layer. Let me undo that stuff really quick. It happens a lot though that like. I'll come up with a, a character design to, you know, like a song, or get inspired, um, and then I'll end up really liking it, and, well, I'll want to keep it. Oops. In just in case I end up ever getting to, like, an original comic idea and I want to use it. Ugh. I need to- I need to let go. I need to learn to let go. I'm just hoarding them at this point, and it's unfortunate. It's not like I- I- it's not like I need the money for a adopts or anything like that. Lord knows that I, I need to find like my market, my niche, or what. It's not like they'll sell, but still. Ugh, golly. I, I know that I am not- I'm very bad about doing things that I don't want to do or that aren't my idea. So like commission work isn't like impossible for me, but I know that I can't do it steadily and maintain it like consistently. So that's not really in the question. Something like adopts I could probably keep up with because I, you know, like you said, I just like doing character design. It's just fun. Um, so I could see myself just like doodling out a couple character designs and then, and then being like, well, I know I'm not going to use them. So does anyone want them? You know, but just, just to keep on getting too freaking attached. To them. I have like 30 OCs that will be on adoption for free. Oh, you know, that's nice. Hell yeah. You know, you just want- you, you just like the design enough, you're just like, you know, can- you know, if you want it, here you go. You know? <sighs> Let's see here. Okay. Let me get my background palette. I was gonna mention and then I got distracted. It's a shocker. Um, I, uh... I have like my palettes for the castle backgrounds now, but I've, I've I've kind of developed the ability to make up a background a little bit purely because um, with uh, with 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 buildings specifically, there so many of them are just you know straight lines, pretty uniform, pretty easy to. Kind of horse around and make up as you go along. 
but I'm afraid that with like chapter two, I've mentioned this before, chapter two is going to have a lot of foliage and like plants. I have no idea if chapter two is going to be easier from the regards of like, I won't have to worry about being so uniform with perspective or if it's going to be much, much harder because it's not uniform. So pray for me in that regard. However, um, Clip Studio does have a lot of very nice and fun brushes and a very good brush engine for like foliage and 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 uh, trees and bushes and leaves. And I'm very excited to get to experiment with those because that seems like it's actually going to be a lot of fun. So here's hoping that it actually pays off. Pray for me. <laughs> That's all I'll say. Okay, let's see. Let me turn off the dialogue just so it makes uh, filling in a little bit easier. Get this brown. Uh, there is like a little gold filigree design over here, but it's going to be covered up probably, so I don't think it's worth it to try and include it. And oh. There we go. Ah, <sighs> all right. Uh, let me purlin noise just to give it a little bit of texture. It's kind of, you know, not not. It's not like it does a shit ton, but I just feel like it does a little bit. It's just kind of nice, you know. I have a cat. She is crawling all over my desk now. Hi, baby. Hello. What can I do for you? Are you a sweet little girl? Are you a sweet little darling? Oh, she's chewing on my hand. All right. Fair enough. I, I see. Understandable. Have a nice day. Underst understandable. Have a nice day. Yo. Brioche. It's brioche time. That's right, baby. Yo, the other day, I saw a TikTok of someone... Um, they didn't realize that they had gone live. They were fucking around in OBS with settings and whatnot. They didn't realize they had gone live. Um, and so the 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 TikTok was just like a, a super cut of, of them like interacting with chat and being like, Oh, hey, everyone. Like, haha, yada, yada. Didn't realize I was live, was just testing some stuff out. And there were so many people, people in the comments uh, just being like, oh my god, this is my nightmare. This is the worst thing that could possibly happen to me. I could not imagine this happening. I would not be able to recover. I would simply evaporate. And I'm like, I may, maybe it's because I, 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 I don't know. I'm not like a huge time streamer, but... <laughs> So much of me just like doing like if I'm fucking around in OBS, I'm either just doing sound tests or um, not doing a whole lot at all. I'm I, I feel like because it wouldn't take I, I don't know if it would take me terribly long to realize that I was live on accident and did not mean to be because Twitch just sends out like a email notification. It's not like a whole heck of a lot of people would be here on accident. And even if there were a whole heck of a lot of people here, oh no, you caught me just kind of sitting, mumbling to myself, which is what I would do on a stream anyway. Like, what are you guys doing that's so embarrassing on your stream time off? Baby, come on. Every time I go to reach over to my keyboard to set my keyboard shortcuts, she starts trying to chew on my hand. Stop it. Oh my god. All she wants is for me to pet her, but baby, I'm doing things right now. I love you. Mwah. This is for baby. <laughs> That's cat hair in my mouth. All right. I see. My hubris. My hubris has portrayed me. I'm trying to give my baby kisses. Hi, can I help you? I love you so much. Please don't sit on my tablet. I love you so much. Please don't sit on my tablet. There you go. There you go, sweetheart. Yeah. Yep. There you can just sit. You just sit your little butt right on the empty spot on my desk and not on the tablet. Love you. All right. Let me see. Da, 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 da. Let me go here. New folder layer for the background. Da, 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 da. Okay, that's not the right color. I wanted this darker brown, please. Baby, what is it? You are so... You are just so demanding. You are just so needy. What is it like to just... To just not have all the love and attention you deserve? Never had a cat? I have two dogs? Oh, hell yeah. I grew up 
Um, usually having at least a cat and a dog. Uh, for the majority of my childhood, I had a cat named Booger and a dog named Dixie. Um, and Dixie was a little rat terrier. She's like a medium-sized dog. He was like, a little bit on the smaller side. Um, she was very sweet, very energetic. And Booger was very much like, do not touch me. Do not interact with me. I will come to you if I need you, okay? She was very sweet, uh, whatever she wanted to be. Um, Booger was very old. Uh, she... She was like 20 or something, whenever I was 20 or something. She was about the same age as me. Um, so she passed away. Um, uh, and then we got a cat named Joey. He was a rescue. And then he just disappeared out the cat door one day and then didn't come back. <laughs> we only had him for like two or three years. Um, and then, uh, we had another rescue, um, from a shelter adopted this time named Sammy. Um, and he is a sweet little boy. He's a shy little skittish little boy, but he is such a sweet little guy. Um, and that is, he lives with my parents currently. And, um, also my parents moved from the house that I grew up in, grew up in. They moved to a house in the mountains. And one day when my mom was out, a uh, random cat emerged out of the woods that looked a lot like Sammy, quite frankly, but looked a lot like Sammy, but wasn't Sammy. Came right up to her. She thought it was Sammy, but then realized that he was much smaller. Meow. He was much smaller and also uh, just not the same cat. And they adopted him too. And his name is Pete. <laughs> He's a very sweet boy. Uh, thank you for stopping by, Chibi. Uh, I hope to see you at the next one. If not, whatever, that's fine. Have a good rest of your night. Uh, but he he's such a sweet boy um dixie also passed away a few years ago she also lived to be like 20 something i don't know like she also grew up to be very old and my mom got a new dog uh that is a um a boston terrier and she's also very sweet she's also very energetic um and her name is gertie gertrude it's which is very funny but she is the kind of dog that will um she she licks to show affection and she will continue to lick uh long past since her mouth runs dry and it is very endearing but also slightly gross we stand let me see i only have my own cat named brioche she is a she is a darling baby girl and i adore her so much Gertie is very energetic, um, kind of honestly to a detriment, if just because, like I said, Sammy is a very skittish, very shy kind of boy. He is very sweet, um, but only um, when he, of course, feels safe. And because Gertie is just so energetic and so loud, it happens a lot that he very clearly gets overwhelmed and it's just like, I'm out of here. Um, so if I, like, go to, like, go pet and love on Sammy, Gertie will be like, Oh my god, you're, like, you're handing out pets? Fuck yeah. And then she'll run over and then just, like, insert herself. And and then Sammy will be like, uh, And then walk away and I'm like, No, baby boy, come back. I love you. Please. <laughs> it's very cute, though. He will, like, just, like, trot over uh, whenever he sees me. Even though it's been uh, many a year since I've hung out uh, and lived with my parents, he still, like, if he sees me, he's like, meow, 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 meow. It's very cute. Why is this not? Oh, wait, uh, hold on, hold on. I made the dots too small, give me a second. Let me up that contrast again. Let me turn it to brightness. A little bit, yeah, that'll be good. Again, like the Perlin noise, dots just add a little bit of texture, kind of break it up a little bit more than just being a gradient, like a random gradient. It's a little bit more interesting to look at than a soft little small gradient. Um, okay, so there's that. Then I can go back up here. Let me copy paste. Uh, if I can see through that. Oh wait, that's the wrong layer. Whoops. <laughs> Use brightness. You can't see exactly what I'm doing. I think the chat box mostly covers it up. Yeah, it totally does, but that's okay. I, I go through the effort of like describing my like process and whatnot, but I'm pretty sure no one cares. <laughs> uh, let me 
rasterize, overlay, like turn it to like 12. Why does that look like that? What? Oh, oh, my bad. Okay. Yeah, that'll be good. Turn that back up. Let me add a new dialogue really quickly. Just because I want to do... Hold on. Uh, I am too... I want to do a little, like, um, little dot dot dot. I'm sure some people are like, why even bother adding in a speech bubble of, like, dot 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 for Link, who does not speak? But, you know, like, we have Link who thinks to himself, uh, and, and Hypa speaks for him. So I feel like the, the little dot 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 is just kind of a way of showing that he is he is he is pensive and reflecting and is notably even more quiet than he is normally you know that's mostly what it is it's for effect i promise it matters to me okay, let me uh rasterize that and make it yeah like that there we go turn that up a little bit so you can see it oh mm. all right Got some flats going. Let me, uh, let me get the, I call it color grading, but I don't actually think that's what you'd call it, but I don't know what else to call it at this point. Get my lighten and get my darken going. And since I'm fading out the black, what I'll normally do is select everything that is inside the panels and inside the dialog boxes. Wait, this guy, this guy, this guy, these dialogues. Invert that and delete out that darken layer. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm going to call that. I'm going to call that pretty good. Uh, I will add the shading in uh, and do that off stream. But yeah, thank you guys for joining me for another fun little little art stream. It's been a hot second since we've been able to do a good long actual comic page stream. And like I said at the be near the beginning, <laughs> uh, I don't know if I'm going to actually be able to stream any comic pages after this one. This was a rare instance of like, hey, I have this page I need to draw. There's not too many spores on this one, so I can actually draw it on stream! Haha! <laughs> but thank you guys for joining me. I hope to see you at the next one, and I hope you guys have a good rest of your night. And yeah, like, thank you guys. I I'll 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 see I'll see you guys later. Farewell, my friends. Farewell, thank you, and farewell, farewell, farewell. <laughs>